Hello and a very warm welcome. My name is Udo Sendai and no matter whether you are an absolute beginner or already know a lot about music theory, in this video you will definitely learn a good amount of essential basics. Then let's get started. And we jump right in. A normal piano today has 88 keys. These are divided into black and white keys. If you look at the keys from above, you can see a certain pattern that repeats itself. The easiest way to see this is to only look at the black keys. First, two black keys close together, then a gap, then three black keys together, then another gap. A total of 12 keys that belong together. And this pattern is repeated over and over again across the entire keyboard. Now you have already learned the first key or scale, the chromatic scale. Chroma is ancient Greek and simply means colorful and you could also say all colors and argue about whether white and black are colors, but let's not go there. The chromatic scale is also described as progressing in semitones. And that reveals the next secret. The step from one key to the next, whether white or black, is always a semitone step. And here there is a small but very important difference to note between the physical existence of a key and the logical assignment of a step from a scale. In simple terms, how the valid keys of the scale are numbered in contrast to the numbering of the stock of existent physical keys. This generally applies to all scales. In the chromatic scale, a physical semitone step and a step of the scale are identical because all 12 available keys in the scale occur as a step. Practically speaking, in the chromatic scale, all keys are numbered from 1 to 12 because they also correspond to the 12 steps on a scale. In the C major scale, only the white keys are numbered from 1 to 7, which corresponds to the 7 steps of the full major scale. In other words, a step can be a semitone, a whole tone, or even more. In the end, it's easier than it sounds, but it's important that you know this and know when you're talking about what. A scale is almost always a subset of the existing physical keys, except for the chromatic scale, which is identical to the number of physical keys. To ensure that the keys can also be named, they also need a name. On an 88 key piano, I start with the leftmost white key. And for the sake of simplicity, only the white keys are named and the alphabet is used. So the first white key is called A, the second white key B, then C, D, E, F, G, and then the pattern repeats again. So the names are simply the first seven letters of the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. The very clever ones among you know that the B is an H in Germany and a few other countries. I'll explain why that is at the end of the video. I'm sticking with the international name B here because it's simpler due to the alphabet and above all, it's historically correct. As I said, more on this later. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G are the seven names of all the keys. But that doesn't quite fit in with our pattern from earlier, with the two black and then the three black keys. You need to know this. Originally, the pattern actually started with A, because a lot of music with string and woodwind instruments, for example violin, flute and cello, was played with a basic note A. At some point in the classical period around the 16th century, after keyboard instruments had become increasingly important, Many pieces were then played with the root note C. This is the so-called natural note series. This natural note series C corresponds exactly to our pattern. The natural note series, that is our pattern, is repeated over and over again across the keyboard in order to know which natural note series is meant, or more practically, which pitch is meant. A standard natural note series was defined in the middle of the piano. 
The C of this natural note series is referred to as the C Helmholtz pitch notation. In conventional notation, it is marked with an apostrophe above the C, but it can also simply be called in scientific pitch notation C4 because it is the fourth C on an 88 key piano counting from the left. By the way, the A4 in this natural note series is the famous new concert pitch with 440 hertz. So, in a piano, C4 is roughly the middle and C4 is one root higher and C3 is one root lower. Very simple. It should be. But as it is, different manufacturers have different opinions. The middle C varies between C3 and C4 and with DAW manufacturers such as Bitwig, Cubase, Pro Tools, Logic, FL Studio, Studio One, Ableton, Ardor, it can get quite wild. Normally this won't bother you because you'll take the pitch you want. You should just know that if two people are talking about the same thing, they might have different definitions for it. So now we know what the seven white keys are called, but what are the five black keys called? And is this grouping of five important? I'll start with the grouping first. If you can't play the piano at all, then sit down at a piano and press down the sustain pedal, the bottom right one, and then just play the black keys. That doesn't sound so bad right away, does it? Because what you're playing belongs to the pentatonic scale. So you're playing correctly in a scale. Pentatonic is also known as the five-tone music. Penta is Greek and means five. A well-known building with five edges is the Pentagon in Virginia, USA. Now to the names of the black keys. And I have some good news and some bad news. The bad news first. The black keys don't have their own names. And the good news is that their names are based on the surrounding key names depending on the scale. It is really simple as that. So if a note in a scale is raised by a semitone on a black key, the black key is given the suffix is in German and sharp in English. And if a note is lowered by semitone, it is given the suffix s in German and flat in English. Let's take the black key between the G and the A as an example. If the G has to be raised by a semitone, meaning that this black key is played instead of the white G, then the black key is called Gis in German and G sharp in English. And if the white A above is lowered by a semitone to the black key, the same key is then called As in German. The E of the S is simply omitted here because of the vowel. And in English, the black key is called A flat. This means that the key theoretically has two different pitches and two different names. This was actually the case, but was then merged for purely technical reasons. There are even pianos that have these additional keys built in. But when the well temperament was established, all this was simplified and combined. What is actually the definition of the well temperament? The fact that the same key can have two different names is called anharmonic equivalence. As already mentioned, this has something to do with the music history and the development of music. If you want to know more about this, look up terms such as anharmonic equivalence, well temperament and perhaps concert pitch and its definition. Nowadays, it is and always will be the same key with the same pitch and this different naming is called anharmonic equivalence. For the sake of completeness, back to the names of the black keys in German and English. Cis des or C sharp D flat, dis S or D sharp E flat, fis ges or F sharp G flat, gis as or G sharp A flat, a is B or A sharp B flat. And the anharmonic equivalence affects not only the black keys, but also, for example, the E and the F and the B and the C. A raised E is then an F, a lowered F is an E. And a raised B is a C, and a lowered C is a B. The term anharmonic equivalence only pops up here and there, and you shouldn't be confused. These days, these are just different names for the same key for different scales. To summarize the facts again. A piano has 88 keys. The first key on the far left is A. The names of the notes on the white keys are the first seven letters of the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. 
The names of the black keys are taken from the white keys depending on which direction the tones come from. And here we speak of an enharmonic equivalence. There is a pattern of black and white keys on the keyboard. These are the natural note series. The distance between one key and the next, whether white or black, is a semitone. A complete natural note series of black and white keys corresponds to the chromatic scale, from the ancient Greek, going through semitones or simply colorful. If you only play the five black keys, you are playing a pentatonic scale. Penta is Greek and means five. I promise to tell you why there is an H instead of a B in Germany. This always causes confusion if you don't decide on a standard from the beginning. I would always recommend the international naming system with B as a standard. It is also the historical correct version. The German H and the lowered B in German used to have different names. For example, the H was called B quadratum and had this squarish sign. And the lowered H, meaning the German B, was called B rotundum and had this B sign. When people started to print the notes instead of copying them by hand, many printers did not have this squarish sign and therefore used a similar looking small H. So in Germany, Scandinavia and some Western Slavic countries, the B quadratum became an H. As they say so ironically today, it's a software bug, there's nothing you can do. What I find funny about the whole thing is that you don't actually need to know anything apart from the beginning of the alphabet to be able to easily understand it all. And it is precisely this fact that many people describe as very difficult. Why? In my opinion, this is because a lot of literature and teachers explain it in the most complicated way possible. One reason for this is probably that they understand it but haven't got through it. Or they simply can't explain it well. Or they just want to make themselves important and turn it into a pseudo-secret science. So please take at least these seven points from the video away with you. In music, most of it is pretty much very easy to deduce logically. Some things also have historical reasons or simply practical reasons. But none of it is complicated, devil stuff or God's goodness accessible only to the initiated. If you don't understand something, then you don't know the basics and that's the good news. Because with this insight you can work your way down to the basics until everything makes sense. Meaning, never stop asking like a children the whys. Asking is like learning, only better. That was a lot of stuff I've made as easy to understand as possible. Of course, there are many more facts and basics on these or many other topics in the entire music theory universe, but this should be enough to get you started. My name is Odo Sendaitokai. Thank you for your time and attention, and I hope to see you soon again in the next video. Stay healthy, save the future, take care, see you then. Ciao, ciao.